Yo, it's your boy Synesthetic. Today I'm going to talk to you about how not to get bored with your DAW, how to keep making music interesting and fun and fascinating. Because uh, let's not forget, if you're not having fun, your music's not going to be fun. And uh, we all want fun music to listen to, we all want to have fun making music. So let's hop right in. Tip 1. Using a variety of VST plugins or stock plugins you usually don't use. So this could be if you're a Serum user, switching it up and using Massive or Vital or uh, what have you, maybe pulling out an old VST like uh, recently I downloaded Albino which is like super old just to play with it or um, this could be using really wild unique VSTs, anything from like Effectrix or Disperse or Comb, M Comb or anything like that. Um, using stock plugins you usually don't use, so that could be, you know, say you typically don't use vinyl distortion. I never do, but the other day I was uh, wanting to mix things up and threw it on a track and played around. Threw it around, uh, threw it on a, yeah, track and played around and it was a lot of fun. Okay. Number two, make different genres. So, say you typically make dubstep, try making some trap. Say you typically make trap, try making some house. You make house, make some drum and bass. You make drum and bass, make some glitch hop, you know? Uh, mix the genres, too. Uh, use more than one genre in a track. Okay, number three. Change your DAW's color and VST skins. So, last night I was working on a track and I wasn't happy with it, it didn't feel interesting. Then I changed my digital audio workspace color, I changed Ableton to purple. All of a sudden I was, uh, you know, it felt interesting again. It ends up I was just feeling bored with the process, not the product. So then um, VST scans too, some VSTs such as Sura, you can change the skin. So, I have a video on my favorite serum skins, you can check that out. Um, number four, different kinds of sessions. So I do writing sessions, where I just work on writing songs. I do patch design sessions, where I just make leads and basses. I have drum and sound effects sample design sessions, where I pretty much make my own sample packs. Um, you can buy some on my website, link below. Number five, collaborate. Um, so, working with other artists always provides fresh perspective, you learn new tricks, and uh, it always sparks inspiration. I would highly suggest finding collaborators. Um, for example, on my Discord server, uh, we do a lot of collaborations together and even have a mega collab with five producers on it so far still in the works. Um, you can join the Discord below if you want to find cool people to collab with, or, you know, find them out in the world, or find them on Reddit, or Instagram, or whatever. Okay, um, number six. Download project files. I know Mr. Bill has puts all his projects up, Cymatics has some free pro project files that you can download. Um, doing this, you can open up, you know, the, uh, the synths and look at how they're made, look at the effects processing, look at the structuring of the song and what scales they use and get a lot of inspiration and see how songs you like are made and this will further your creative endeavors. Seven, feed your creative diet. This could be binging YouTube videos, such as mine, or um, all the other brilliant YouTubers. This could be listening to podcasts, mentioning Mr. Bill again, he has a great podcast about electronic music. Um, if you know more podcasts for electronic music, please leave them in the comments so I can check them out. Uh, this could be just listening to different music. This could be different genres of music, different artists within your genre. This could be anything from listening to not even electronic music. You could listen to classical or indie music and get inspiration from there that you wouldn't from electronic music. Now, number eight. Um, try recreating a song or a sound. 
I've only ever done this with a song once, not gonna lie, and I didn't get very far before creating my whole own unique different song, um, which is honestly way better. Uh, I'm thinking of trying to do this again at some point to hopefully elicit the same result, or at least learn how other people are doing things. Uh, or create, recreating a sound. Like recently I was listening to a song and there was a really cool growl. So I opened Serum and I just worked out and worked out till I could recreate that growl and learn some cool tricks along the way. And ended up with a sweet growl to use. Um, nine. Give yourself a challenge. This could be taking one sound and flipping it into a whole song. We do that on the Discord, and I've seen a bunch of YouTubers do it. Um, this could be only using one VST, like my song Evisceration was right when Vital came out. I had never used it, and I challenged myself to make a whole song using this one VST. Uh, there's plenty and plenty of challenges. This could be incorporating as many genres as you can into one song. There's so many challenges you can give yourself. Um, this could be using no samples, making everything from scratch. This could be, yeah, if you use presets in most of your songs, it could be no presets even, something that simple. Um, number 10, downloading new sample packs and presets. So every time I get a new sample pack, I try and make a song from it, even if it's not like a really good song, just like a quick beat, I'll try and always use new sample packs to spark my creativity for a new song uh, or preset packs. Um, and then bonus tip, sometimes just take a break. I call it a creativity detox sometimes, so just step away from Ableton, not listen to any of the styles of music that I create. Uh, and just take a break for like, I don't know, recently I did it for a week and I came back hungry to create. So that's been my 10 tips for creativity. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any more videos. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.